Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this RSA web seminar on pandemic planning, securely enabling a mobile workforce. In today's presentation, we'll be discussing business resilience and pandemic preparedness and how to securely enable a mobile workforce when needed. We have two presenters today, Roland Cloutier and Karen Kifney. Roland Cloutier is EMC's Vice President and Chief Security Officer and is responsible for providing business protection operations worldwide. Karen Kifney is the Principal Product Marketing Manager for RSA Authentication Solutions and is responsible for developing marketing strategy and messaging. So Roland, can you tell us a bit about how EMC approaches us? Absolutely. I think um, one of the first things that I want to talk about uh, more than pandemic is really about the term you use, business resilience and EMC's business res resilience objectives. Our focus here is that this is a shared business responsibility, a corporately owned responsibility to enable our divisions to be able to recover from multiple events, which, which I'll get to in a moment. But first, this is truly a life cycle of emergency management for the company to ensure the sustainability of our organization, our shareholders, and the safety and life safety of our, our employees and our customers. And that is really how we've planned our entire program. Our approach is an all-hazards approach. By this, we mean that we look for every conceptual negative impact event that would potentially harm the business. So we don't just plan independently for pandemics, although that's a use case scenario. We focus on things like security or, or government issues, natural disasters, wars, uh, and so on and so on, uh, so on and so forth. And we do this across each one of our independent business units to ensure that their specific components or their, their specific value chain is protected. Now, as I move to the next slide, I don't want to give the impression that we do everything at once and everyone's protected and there's, a, there's business continuity uh, built out through, through the entire organization. Again, from the first slide, we truly focus on those three core areas, business continuity and contingency planning, disaster recovery plans, and incident and crisis management. But we couldn't possibly do 100% protection in all these areas. So our programs are all risk-based, including the ones that I just mentioned. We incorporate different components into our risk module and evaluation, like financial brand, life safety, and all of these things must be evaluated looking at the condition of what those threat management options are and actually managing the impact through the consequences. We do this based on a determinable outcome in all of these varying levels of scenarios across all of the things that we brought to you uh, on the last slide. I think core to how we deliver business resilience not just business continuity, but that true business resilience is these building blocks to our actionable strategy. First of all, we look at the end-to-end -end business concept of operations, and, and we refer to this as the business value chain. So if this was a manu manufacturing division, we look at how they design the products, build the products, test the products, manufacture them, package them, ship them, service and support them, and so on and so forth. And we look through each one of those areas to ensure that we understand the people impact, the facilities impact, uh, uh, regional considerations, uh, and so on and so forth. And we provide these value chain risk assessments as a part of our continuity assessment as well as our normal risk and security assessments. And they all work together in fashion. These are iterative reviews that, that provide us testing scenarios when the business changes on a yearly or quarterly basis. So whether we're in the, the normal testing, yearly testing, or quarterly testing plan, depending on the division, or it's a simple change to where we're operating that business unit out of, we make changes to the plan based on, on that value chain. But I'd also like to point out that if you're not doing this now, and you're not working towards a sustainable program, it's going to be a little bit too late because it's just like that insurance. After you have the accident, you can't go back and get it. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more specific about the global business and the global pandemic. We have a two, a, a kind of a, a two approach. It's very simple. First is with regards to the pandemic, infectious diseases are people issues first and foremost. And, and, and health and safety must be considered. 
We believe that mitigating the impact to people as a company improves the, the resiliency position of the organization itself. And so in the following slides, we'll talk about how we approach that. So first, let's talk a little bit about the physical aspect of this, because this truly is a people issue. We have, working with our business problems, EMC across all of its divisions and all of its operating units worldwide, really focuses on leveraging the health and wellness of our employees in general. Whether it's through the continuing flu shots and stress reduction programs, or it's it's the uh, you know the hand sanitizers that we offer in in different buildings during our flu seasons, and as those migrate to different to different theaters throughout the year, we ensure that we have the appropriate things in place, whether they're programs, people-based programs, or actual physical things inside the buildings to help out. For instance, we have masks where appropriate. Uh, we train our first responders and give them specialty gear to identify uh, problems within within our facilities globally. And and then next really comes that psychological program. We communicate quite frequently. So from the very top, setting the tone through our uh, presidents of our business units, through our, through our EVP of our human resources, and even our chairman, we drive a communication that educates employees first and foremost, then and then talks to them about how they should handle them themselves and their families during these critical times. We continue to increase the visibility of our cleaning staff, meaning our facilities are, you know, it gives us a, a, a calm feeling to our employees and shows that the, the business is really concentrating on their health. And we post a, a, lot, a lot of public and private health information that we get from our own health care vendors as well as we get from governments around the world, specific to those regions and theaters which we operate. And again, we operate as a practical organization to ensure that we are a flexible company that enables our workforce to, to, when appropriately, work from different locations or stay home and ask our employees to, to make sure they're, they're healthy, their families are healthy, and to be creative around accommodating staff who need to care for their children or other dependents at their home. So these are just a few of the things in those, in those three core areas of how we enable what we call employee resilience. Now let's touch upon business resilience during pandemic. Because I think what's unique about this area is specific to pandemic is understanding that the, the pe people impact to our service and value chains within our, our, our business continuing plans are absolutely critical specific for pandemic because it is truly a, a, a people issue. When we look at risks to our value chains and how to deliver service and get our business done, what we look at in impact instances such as what if an entire country didn't allow travel? What if the entire EU didn't allow travel? Or travel to and from specific countries? How do we support our customers? How do we ensure that our, our operating environments continue uh, to be able to take, take calls, first, second, third level call handling centers, and so on and so forth. So we have to really look at developing that bench strength for key functions and where they are located globally to develop that resiliency. That's a key thing that we've done over the last two years. Again, we've also been able to distribute critical functions between our global locations, training our workforces and partners that deliver, deliver these key functions. We've also looked at investigating tools to enable these this remote work, and a few of those include existing technologies we had in place, but expanding some of those. We've looked at our VPN, our virtual private network. We've looked at uh, these these unique, um, what we'll call uh, global portals to allow direct access to applications from anywhere in the world, and so. Again, we've also altered our, sta our, our shifts, and, and we've staggered our shifts for employees in different business units as we felt that to be effective. 